Hi, I'm Raj. Over the course of the last few months, I've built and also still building quite a few AI apps. And I must say that I'm using ChatGPT APIs quite heavily in order to build my AI apps because it's really easy to get started and also it's great to work with. But right now, I've come to a point where I'm planning to stop using ChatGPT APIs for building my apps. Right before I explain you why you should stop using ChatGPT APIs, let's take a look at what happens when you build your apps using ChatGPT APIs. Imagine you're building an app and that app is requesting information from ChatGPT endpoint. And at this point, you're essentially hitting an API abstraction layer. Behind this API abstraction layer, you have a collection of models running on a GPU cluster. And just so that you know, in order to run a language model, you need the model architecture plus the model weights and a GPU powered hardware. Theoretically, you know that OpenAI is using certain language models underneath the API abstraction layer, but practically you have no way of knowing what they're doing behind the scenes. Imagine in case of low traffic scenario, they may switch to a smaller model and you may see a sudden drop in the quality of the answers that you're getting. So I'm not saying that OpenAI is doing it, rather I'm saying they may do it and you will not know about it. Or even if you know about it, you can't do anything about it. In a nutshell, the level of control that you have stops at the API abstraction layer. So what's the alternative? When you're building AI apps experimentally, we can use ChatGPT APIs and it's not gonna hurt much. But when you wanna build AI apps more seriously, you should look into something called as GPU rentals. GPU rentals are platforms offering you the flexibility of choosing your hardware and also allow you to choose an open source model or upload your own models. A good example of this is a platform called Replicate, which I've personally used. And a side note, I'm not sponsored by Replicate. They allow you to rent hardware to run open source models and also allow you to bring your own custom models. And on top of that, they offer you the ability to scale up and scale down your hardware instances with a cost calculator. So in terms of architecture, this is how it looks. Your web app would hit the platform API first and behind the API lives deployments. The deployment basically controls the model and the hardware instances that you can use. The level of control and the customization depends on the pricing. For pricing information, I would recommend you to check out the page called How Does Billing Work, where you have more details about the models, instances, and the level of control you have. In this document, you can see that we have the public models. Um, they're auto-deployed and can be accessed with the Replicate API. And you share a hardware pool with other customers, meaning your requests enter a shared queue alongside other customer requests. So when there is no traffic, the instances are scaled down to zero and you cannot change hardware that works with the model. On the same lines, you have the private models that you can upload and run. And this will run on a dedicated hardware. So you don't really have to share your hardware with other people. Similar to public models, when there is no traffic, the instances are scaled down to zero. And if you want to control your deployments, then you can go for something called as the custom deployments, where you are allowed to tweak the hardware you use and the number of instances you run. In this case, you can even choose the min and the max number of instances that you want to run. And you also get an update with the calculated cost. And last but not least, they also offer token-based pricing similar to OpenAI on few open source LLMs. Platforms like Replicate run on a serverless architecture that scale up and scale down based on the traffic. So you may suffer from cold boots if your instances are scaled down to zero. If you're experimenting with the platform, choose a popular public model because cold boots are uncommon because it's kept warm from all the activity from all the different users. For less frequently used models, cold boots are more frequent because instances are scaled down to zero. And if you want to avoid cold boots on your custom deployments, you can keep one of your instances running all the time, but keep in mind that you will incur costs on them and might end up paying a lot of money. Only do it if you want to avoid cold boots. And now that we've talked about GPU rentals, you can take it one step further and save more costs by running LLMs locally on your device. And how do you do that? There are several ways to run your models locally. 
I personally use Olama because it's just a really simple CLI that works great. Keep in mind that the kind of models you run depend heavily on your machine. For example, on my M1 MacBook of 32 GB RAM, I can run language models up to 33 billion parameters. For example, Mixtro 8 into 7B requires 48 GB of RAM, which I suppose you cannot run on most laptops. But Olama is still a great way to run and test small models with your app because it also comes with the default REST API endpoint, which you can hit and get a response. Hope now it's a bit more clear why I want you to stop only using ChatGPT APIs and check out the other options on the table. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more and I will talk to you soon.